I got it now. You got it? Okay. All right, so first thing I want to ask is how many volumes do we have in the code book? Three. 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 Okay, which one comes first? Two. Two. Two, and then? One. One. Then. Three. Good. Out of all three volumes, which one do, do we not use as three. information coders? Good. All right, and so in volume three, we actually don't find illnesses, injuries, or diseases, but we find procedures. Procedures. So who reports those procedures? Hospital, hospital inpatient coders. Awesome, love it. All right, and then with um, ICD nine CM, the title of your actual book. What does ICD stand for? International Classification of Diseases. International Classification of Diseases. And the nine back behind the ICD, what does that represent? Ninth re divi ninth revision. The ninth revision. What about the CM back behind it? What does it stand for? Clinical modification. Clinical, yeah. Clinical modification. Very good. And we are going to be leaving ICD-9 and moving to a new coding system called ICD-10. Um, on which date? October 1st. 1st. October 1st. 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 1st of 2014. Good. All right, good. Um, and the whole reason why we're going to ICD-10 is for what? More clarification. Yeah, more specificity. Right now, we're not able as coders to, to be as specific as we need to be. Um, we're also adding a few things like laterality um, with ICD-10. A few more uh, guidelines are changing, um, and some of the guidelines are actually being simplified. Um, so you'll, I really believe you're going to enjoy ICD-10. We will start learning that actually next month. When it comes to what we call the coding bible of ICD-9. Coding clinic. Awesome. Coding clinic. Good. And when do you have access to the coding clinic? All. Like right now at the house, do you have access to it? No, once we get certified. Yes, once you well, once you get certified and once you get a job. But yeah, because it's usually your place of employment that actually gives you access to the to the coding clinic. All right, very good. Now I, I don't know that I've mentioned about the guidelines that have to be downloaded. Um, I haven't I haven't made it there yet. But there are guidelines in the front of your book, as you as you know. But these guidelines are usually outdated. So for board exam purposes, you're going to have to use the guidelines in the front of the book because it's not letting you down a computer and download the latest guidelines from CDC. But you know, know that in the real world, as coders, you will want to have your ICD-9 manual, but you'll also want to uh, download um, from CDC.gov the latest uh, edition of the guidelines because those are going to be the newest. It seems like the books go out and get published before the guidelines are ready, and that's just been the deal for many, many years. And Hopefully that will change with ICD-10, but I'm not too sure. What does CDC stand for? Centers for Disease Control. Centers for Disease Control. Very good. All right. Now, with your um, volumes, volume two is otherwise known as which volume? The alphabetical, alphabetical, alphabetical volume. volume. All right. What about volume one? Tabular. The tabular, also known as, not alpha, but numerical. numerical. All right. Good job. Um, in terms of categories, subcategories, and subclassifications, how many digits make up a category? Three. 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 What if you have four numbers? Subcategory. Sub Category. And if you have five? Subclassification. Sub Subclassification. Sub Very good. When we try to figure out, you know, in a group of words, in a sentence, what the main term is, what's the question that we usually ask ourselves? Just to kind of slam everything together, you know, this is my main term out of all these words. What do you ask yourself? What's wrong with the patient? Yeah. What's the main thing the matter with my patient? Right? Good. And those main terms, how do they look in your IC9 book in volume two? They're red, bolded. They're red and bolded. And they are in what kind of order? Alphabetical. Alphabetical. All right, very good. Now, once we find a main term in the index or the alphabetical index of our book, we are then to utilize the subterms to get even more specificity, right? Yes. Subterms are also known as what kind of words? There's something, they're blank modifiers. What was that first word? Non-essential non modifiers. Not non-essential, but no, essential, essential modifiers. Essential modifiers. Now, thanks for bringing up the non-essential modifiers. So back behind a main term, we will usually find words inside parentheses. What are those words called? Non-essential non -essential. modifiers, and how do they make you feel? Warm and fuzzy. Warm and fuzzy. It's basically a, a reassurance to the coder that if your doctor has documented anything inside these these uh, not or parentheses, that that it, I guess the reaction is from the coder is that you feel better about it. You know, you've got now not one word but two words showing up in your doctor's documentation. However, we also went over the fact that. 
Um, it, if we go back to the doctor's documentation and there is nothing um, stated in, in his um, documentation that states what is in the parentheses, do we have to worry about that? Not really. Not really. What was, what, how did I do it last week? Yeah. <laughs> right? It doesn't really, so it doesn't really affect code assignment, what is in the non-essential modifiers. Good job, good memory, everybody's doing great. Um, what is an eponym? It is a disease named after or named for someone. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So it's a disease or a procedure, believe it or not. Um, named after the person who did a detailed topic or study on the, um, on the disease itself or the procedure itself. Can you give me some examples? Parkinson's. 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 What's another one? <laughs> That's the only one I know. <laughs> Hodgkin's. Hodgkin's. Another one. Yeah. Bell's palsy. Right? There's a procedure called Davis procedure. Right? So the list goes on and on. When you see an eponym, can the coder use that as the main term? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Eponyms will start with a capital letter, you know, hence it's somebody's name, right? Okay. Um, can we, once, once the book, we went to the main term, we went to the subterm, and it gives us a code, can we uh, code directly from the alphabetical index? No. no. Absolutely not. Um, so we've got to go and do what now? We'll go to the the Confirm and verify in the tabular. Very good. Um, basically, if you see it this way, you'll be good. If you see your alphabetical index as a recommendation, you will always know that you still have to go somewhere else, right, to confirm and verify. Now, once you get to volume one, which is also known as alpha, no. not alpha, no, but numerical. Oh, numerical. Once you get there, what are the main things you are looking for? How about number one thing that you're looking for when you get to the tabular? Category? Picture yourself. Picture yourself the coming at the house. You're at the house and you're finding me a code. You just found it. You're going to the tabular. Why'd you go there? To verify. To verify. Awesome. I just heard it. Do I need a fourth or a fifth digit? Right? Because we want to. We always want to code to the highest level of specificity. What's the number? What's the next thing that we really have to concern ourselves with? Behind the fourth or fifth digit, the red bullet, I believe, is, is what includes the next your book. book. The excludes and includes, specifically the excludes, because the excludes will tell you that if such and such words are documented in your operative report or progress note, whatever it is that you're coding from, then you do not report the code that you were just about to, right? Does that make sense? You were just about to make a, a code, but because as good coders do, you read your excludes, and sure enough, you saw something in the excludes that your doctor also documented, you're not gonna report that code anymore, right? But the wonderful thing about the excludes is, is it doesn't just leave you hanging, it actually gives you the recommended code, right? Yes. So once you go to that recommended code and you start fresh, now you're going back to the tabular with some new code, now what are you concerned with? Kind of the cycle repeats itself again, right? You gotta see, well, do I need a fourth or fifth digit? All over again, right? Is there an excludes and includes here, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have to worry about, let's say, let's say our code was a, um, a, sub, a subcategory. And if that's the case, how many codes are, how many digits are in our subcategory? Four. 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 So we'll have 428.0, something like this. And so here we are, and so this sounds great. We do not need a fifth digit. The excludes here um, had nothing to do with what our doctor has documented. But now we're at the subcategory level. But we can have instructional notes show up at any level. So where do we have to back, to back up to once we're at the subcategory level? Where do we go 